We are inside the Nutter Center in Dayton, Ohio, on the campus of Wright State University, where tonight it's the season opener, the Illinois State University Redbirds and the Wright State University Raiders. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Comcast Continuing Coverage of Illinois State University Basketball. Kurt Pegler along with Bob Morris for the season opener here tonight. It Five, that can be a tough matchup sometimes. Illinois State and Wright State, just the second ever meeting between the two schools. The Redbirds won the first one last February. Tonight's game is up next here on Comcast. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington, or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. Products don't know how to find customers, but Comcast Spotlight does, with a mix of on-air, online, and on-demand advertising. You can reach your customers wherever they are. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. And we are back at the Nutter Center as we get set for tip-off between the ISU Redbirds and the Wright State Raiders. Let's take a look at the starting five. First for Illinois State, coached by Tim Sienkiewicz in his second season. Osiris Eldridge and Emmanuel Holloway make up the backcourt. They're actually starting four guards at forward, if you would. Lloyd Phillips will play in his first ever Illinois State game, junior college transfer. And Champa Gucci, the transfer from Oregon, is in the starting five for the first time for the Redbirds as well. Dima Odiacosa, one of the best uh, secrets, if you will, of the Missouri Valley Conference, one of the most improved players in the league, is really the only true post player in the original starting five for the Redbirds. The Wright State Raiders starting five. Again, a veteran lineup that uh, is really guard dominated for the Raiders, who will also start Vaughn Duggins and Will Graham and Todd Brown in their backcourt, kind of a three-guard backcourt, if you will, 
Corey Cooperwood and Ronnie Thomas will be their post players for the Raiders, and they are coached by Brad Brownell, who is in his third season, 44 wins and 20 losses. He's the coach that came over from North Carolina, Wilmington, had 127 wins there in four seasons. This is a team, a veteran team, Bob. The uh, the Wright State Raiders are expecting a big crowd here. This is a team that has high expectations for second at the Horizon League and a team that is hoping for postseason aspirations. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. I think this is a team that you'd have to classify as a veteran squad when you got a fifth-year senior and running your point, two juniors that are on your wings. I think that's where, you know, obviously where all teams like to start with their guard play because that's, who handles, that's who's handling the ball the most. And when you've got those three returning, as Wright State has this year, they're, they're, they believe they're set. Well, let's talk about your keys to the game. What do the Redbirds have to do successfully tonight to come away with a win in the season opener? Well, I think I think it's pretty, you know, there's a lot of things when you open each season. It's tough to narrow it down to three, but I think the three that we're going to talk about is the best three we got. You need to control the dynamic duo of the, of the Raiders. Huggins, Huggins and Brown, you can't let them go off and just kill you. You've got to be able to throw a defense out there that's pesky enough to keep them in check and under control. The next thing is, you, the Redbirds have to be able to play their style of defense, which is the aggressive man-to-man, half -man, hurt, get in your face, without getting into foul trouble. You're coming in, the Redbirds are a little short-handed with Alex Rubin not available, Bobby Hill not available, and Brandon Sampe playing limited minutes tonight. So you can't get yourself in foul trouble where you have to rely too much on the experience of the underclassmen. The third point is, the way the, Red, the Raiders will play defense is you, they will pack it in in the middle of the paint out of their soft man-to-man -man versus our aggressive man-to-man, -man, which makes it very, very difficult to get the ball in the middle of the paint. So you've got to make the extra pass that will create the extra points and the opportunity to knock down some open perimeter shots. We mentioned that this is just the second overall meeting between these two schools. The BSU won the only previous game in which these two played. That was last February the 24th, the Bracket Buster game at Redbird Arena, won by Illinois State. 54-46. We're expecting a similar low-scoring game tonight. The officials, a Missouri Valley Conference crew, works the game. Jerry Pollard, Don Daly, Jerry Heater, and the opening tip is controlled by the Redbirds, and the 2008-2009 season is underway. We're glad you're alongside here on Comcast. Kirk, there isn't anything much more exciting to me than this. We got basketball, collegiate basketball, underway. We got lots of months of good fun and, and good basketball. Both teams are going to play man-to-man -man defense as the ball is kicked. It's going to go all the way down to the Redbird bench. It's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to go to Red State. So the Redbirds have a turnover in their first possession of the year. Well, let's hope that's not an omen of any kind that we're going to have to live with. Just a little mishandled there by, by Super O. Got the ball down, got her kick, going out of bounds, lost control. Now you just got to strap it on and play some deep. Both these two teams uh, guard dominated teams. Wright State with three guards on the floor right now. Illinois State with four guards on the floor right now. Well, yeah, that's true. We got four. We're actually going with our small lineup with Champ going down low and playing the four spot. Here's Cooperwood. He's the uh, National Junior College Player of the Year. The ball stripped him and it's out of bounds. The Redbirds almost had a steal there. Well, I think you see, you're going to see when we go with this small lineup that, that the defensive sequence we just saw right there with uh, Emmanuel Holloway down and helping out when the ball goes inside the chance person at the low post. You're going to see a lot of defensive help in that manner tonight. That's Corey Cooperwood. Number five will be keeping our eyes on him. He was a two-time junior college All-American before transferring here to Wright State. Here's Brown's first shot. It's a three that's no good. And Champa Gucci with his first rebound as an Illinois State Redbird. Good defensive sequence to open the season for the birds right there. Eldridge over a double team. Fadeaway jumper is missed. He's going to attract a lot of attention tonight. Oh, he is. He had two on him right there. And he's, that's going to be just... A similar evening for him all night long. Good overplay by Odiacosa and steal by Odiacosa. And there's going to be a foul against Wright State. Great play once again on the defensive sequence. That time by Dima Odiacosa getting out in the passing lane, getting a hand on the ball. But then he followed it up. He didn't just slap it free and stop. He went after it and continued through and got the steal. And then eventually drew the foul. Nagai Evans is checking in now for the Raiders, our first 
substitution of the game. Aguchi's shot is no good. High up to get the offensive rebound is Holloway. Aguchi's going to get a second crack. His three is good, and the Redbirds' first basket of the season comes from the Oregon transfer. Welcome to Redbird basketball camp. We like seeing that. We want to see many more just like it. Aguchi and Osiris Eldridge back to back. They, they really go at it hard at practice, and all last year, while Aguchi couldn't play while he sat out that year, he and Osiris had some memorable practices going head to head. Now they're on the floor at the same time, and we've got another foul, but this time it's going to go against the Redbirds. Yes, it did. They, the, uh, the Raiders made a great backdoor cut, good pass, and our help side was just a half step slow rotating over. And as a result, Dima Odiacosa picks up his first foul. So Odiacosa, the foul, and it's the Redbirds' first of the game. And to the free, th free throw line is Nagai Evans. He's a sophomore who as the season progressed last year, got more and more playing time as he got more confident. And of course, Wright State had a bunch of injuries last year, Bob, so he was kind of forced into it. But as the season went on, his minutes increased. Yes, he, and, and justifiably so. You know, from what we have read and what we've heard, the young man just really matured as the year progressed. He's from North Canton, Ohio, so not too far from here. Brad Brown has done a nice job of recruiting the state of Ohio. Here's a Gucci now. Ball is tipped out of bounds, so the Redbirds will maintain possession. We are just underway. First game of the year, Redbirds and the Raiders. It's Wright State University out of the Horizon League. It's being picked in the preseason for second in the Horizon League. The Redbirds preseason picked for third in the Valley. And once again, it appears to be a really good matchup between the two. Last year was a great game. It came down to the end. Redbirds prevailed playing some awesome defense. And tonight looks like it's not going to be anything much different than that. Phillips penetrating. Couldn't get the finger roll to go. Odiacosa offensive rebound. Redbirds yep. will get another look at it. Dima did the right thing. He got under the beneath the backboard and couldn't get a shot up. So he brought it out and cleared out for a new clock. Odiacosa backs himself wow. in and the finger roll is good. What great body control that time by the big fella. Back his man down. Nobody doubled on him and he took it up. Not right handed, but left handed. John David Gardner, that's him with the basketball. He's checked in now for Wright State. He's another guy that was hurt last year. He whistled for the travel. He was a guy that battled ankle injuries, missed most of last year, 21 or 20 of the final 21 games. He was on the bench with an injury. Well, from the Redbirds' perspective, they would wish he would still be there tonight, <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> Ironically, he was a player that was recruited by Brad Brownell when Brownell was uh, at North Carolina Wilming Wilmington and then followed him here to Wright State. Personally, I don't understand why you would leave Wilmington, North Carolina to come to <laughs> Dayton, Ohio. I like the weather in Wilmington a lot better. They got an offensive foul. It's going to go against Illinois State, and it's against Champaguchi. Got a little bit out of control, and you know the old adage is you shouldn't leave your feet to make a pass, and, and, and as Champ did that time, the foul went against him, and justifiably so. It was a charge all the way. Scott Grody has checked in for Wright State, and Brandon Sampe has checked in for the Redbirds, and what a remarkable story. Here's a guy that had hip surgery in August, was expected to be out until Christmas time, and yet in the season opener, Brandon Sampe is in uniform and on the floor. And with all that being said, and I couldn't agree with it anymore, how amazing and surprising it is. Oh, overplay, steal by Aguchi, foot race to the basket all the way down, and he's fouled from behind by Ron Thomas, so free throw time now for Aguchi. Once again, great defensive sequence by the Birds twice now that the Raiders have tried to enter the ball at the high post position and and you'll see the finish up here champ goes in for the lay in and gets fouled that the Redbirds have been able to overplay that high post entry pass by the Raiders and get a steal from it and draw a foul to finish up what I was saying is with all that being said how great it is that Brandon Sampe is back let's not get our expectations too high that he's 100 percent because he certainly isn't I think at best he says he's 80%, which usually means players like to stretch things. He's 70, 75% at best. So he's got to work his way back into game shape and, and get his game legs under him as this season goes on. Well, he's played 16 minutes in the Redbirds exhibition game on Tuesday. And today at the shoot-around, the ISU coaching staff told us he would likely have to play at least 16 minutes tonight. Yes, and I, you know, and I think that's, that's realistic. And I think they're stretching it as much as they can because of the lack of the availability of Bobby Hill to come in. He's not even dressed and able to come on and give many minutes, so they're trying to really stretch and get Sam Pay's minutes up to where he's comfortable, but yet being safe. 
Brandon Holtz, the senior from Bloomington, has checked in for the Redbirds. There's Vaughn Duggins with his first shot of the season, and that's good. Showing you what he does best. Comes off a double screen, staggered screens that time. He catches the ball and without a dribble puts it up for a shot. First team preseason all Horizon League, and now a steal. Thomas comes away with it. Up the floor comes Wright State, penetrating and scoring is John David Gardner. Sloppy that sloppy pass that time on a cross court attempt from Osiris. He's got to settle down a little bit. He's having a couple early turnovers in the game. Osiris has. He needs to find himself and just relax and play his style. Four in a row scored now by Wright State. And the Redbird lead, which was one six, is down to two. Here's Holtz. Thought about it. Six on the shot clock. Holloway down the lane, and he's fouled. That's on Ronnie Thomas, and that would be his second foul in the first four-plus minutes of this game. Great recognition that time by Emmanuel Holloway. He recognized that their post player came out high to play defense, and he split the two, went in, drew the foul. Great recognition. We're just underway in Dayton, Ohio. 7-5 Redbirds back with more from Wright State in a moment. At Broman Healthcare, we reach more hearts. From Bloomington to Eureka and Leroy to Pontiac. We touch more lives with state-of-the-art facilities and expert specialized care. We help you and your loved ones more than we can say. The heart knows no boundaries, neither do we. Will Rogers said, don't talk to me about the return on my money. Talk to me about the return of my money. Just guarantee it and make sure it's going to be there. In 29 years of helping individuals with their investment and savings plans, people have one desire in regard to their money above all others, and that is for safety. Today, there are ways to experience the potential of market-type rates of return while protecting your principal. If this strategy, growth with safety, is appealing to you, contact us today, and we'll show you exciting new alternatives for your money to help it grow and keep it safe at the same time. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. Back at the Nutter Center in Dayton, Ohio, Kurt Pegler and Bob Morris view Illinois State with an early 7-5 lead over Wright State. Last year's game at Redbird Arena again was a 54-46 game, Bob, and we are expecting a similar contest with probably the first team. If anybody gets to 60, the first team to 60 is going to win, but likely the winning team is going to be somewhere in the 50s at this I, point, I right? think if you would ask both coaches, they would agree wholeheartedly with that. If you're looking for a uh, 100 to 98 contest, I think you, you're looks, not going to see it in this game. Else. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to have an offensive foul, it looks like, against the Redbirds, oh perhaps on Brandon Holtz. Oh, my. I'm, I'm, I'm not accepting that at this level of basketball as being a foul. And Let's see here if we can see this. This is Holtz at the top of the screen. Well. He's as solid and set as could be. Oh, well. I've missed one or two things in my life, too. First foul against Brandon Holtz. Three ball for the lead is no good. That shot was Duggins. It's missed, and here come the Redbirds. So far, every time he's taken a shot, it's been contested. Eldridge slipped the pass down low to Sam Pay, but Wright State quickly recovered and knocked the ball out of bounds. We'll see another one of the Redbirds transfers now for the first time. Sayad Adzik, he transferred last year, and if you recall, from Southern Cal. And so he is in. We'll also see, likely tonight, Landon Shipley, who's the transfer from Austin Peay. So the Redbirds have some players who've played elsewhere that are finding a home in normal. Yeah, they are, and, and they're all slowly but surely finding a way to fit into the Tim Jankovic system. Sam Payne. Holtz, three. Good. Count it. Great job of locating the open man on the reverse pass by Brandon Sampe, but also a great job of being ready to fire the ball when he catches it 
by Brandon Holt. From one Brandon to the next. Brandon Holt is a 43% three-point shooter last year, and if you've followed his career, you know that's, that's his favorite thing to do, set up outside the arch and hit that long ball. Backdoor pass, ball is on the floor, Redbirds come away with it. Great defense once again by Manuel Holloway. Coming up big early in the game with some defensive uh, great plays. Sam Pay with a nice spin move, and he drew contact on the foul on Gavin Horn. I think that right there is going to be a, a real key to tonight's game in, in from the Redbirds' perspective. As we see in a replay, Brandon gets his man down, he posts him up, and he pulls a quick spin, baseline spin on him. And I think if Brandon has the ability to continue that, doing that, he will get them in foul trouble at their post position. He has that quick first step that he didn't necessarily have a year ago because he was carrying in excess of 34 pounds and he's carrying right now. Brandon is playing, he's listed at 240. He has certainly lost some weight. Well, when you think about it, that's remarkable in and of itself after hip surgery to not gain weight, but to lose weight. Exactly, the young man has showed some real discipline and determination during the off season since that surgery to make himself a better ball player. Champa Gucci has checked back in now as Sampe splits those free throws. Emmanuel Holloway to the bench, so it's a Gucci Holtz, Sampe, Odzik, and Eldridge right now on the floor for the Redbirds, who have a five-point lead at 10-5. They've doubled up right State here in the early going. Here's Brown. Backdoor pass picked off by Osiris Eldridge. It's he and Aguchi up the floor. Lobbed to Eldridge and oh finished my. for oh. the Redbird Jr. Oh, my. What a great sequence. The steal, the break, the pass, the dunk. The birds are making it happen. Well, when fans wanted to see what the Redbirds would look like with Aguchi and Osiris on the floor at the same time, they got it. And here's another look at this terrific play. It starts on the defensive end. Well, that's exactly right, and I tell you, that's what makes the coaching staff happy, is that it starts offense with from the defense. And the finish on that is an exclamation point that the birds can really get excited about. And I think oh, believe he got hacked on that, too. I think there should have been a contact foul there. If the birds continue to play with the intensity on the defensive end that they're showing right now, they're going to drive some people crazy this year. The overall athleticism has shown every time that the Raiders have made an attempt to make a backdoor cut and get a pass out of it. Two out of the three times, there have been steals results for the Redbirds. And I think that's really a credit to this coaching staff that they've been able to get that implemented this early into the season. In the first six minutes and 15 seconds of this game, Wright State has four shots and five turnovers. That Redbird defense has come up with five turnovers in the first six minutes. I, I, I don't think that the Redbird staff could write the script any better because it's it's convincing the players that this is the way we have to play in order to be successful. Evans, three, missed it. Long rebound tipped out, controlled by Wright State. Got now it. it's Brown. Bird's got to get those boards. You can't give them second chances out of out of missed three-pointers. This is Troy Tabler. He drew contact. It's going to be another foul on Holt, his second. Troy Tabler is the son of a former Major League Baseball player, Pat Tabler, played with Toronto, played with Cleveland, and now his son is a Division I college basketball player. We see the replay in there, and you, you see the body nudge by Brandon as, as, as Tabler goes in on the drive. But it all goes back to the missed rebound. We gave him a second chance. It cost us in the fouls. Here's Tabler. Long three is good. And it cost us on the points, too. So out of that, from a missed defensive rebound, they got not only a foul, they got a three-point play. Tabler, a 35% shooter from the three-point arch a year ago. Knocks down his first triple. And another offensive foul against the Redbirds on a screen at the top of the circle. That's the second one called here in the first seven minutes of this basketball game. Well, I guess... My only point on that is with, if they're going to call those, then it's got to be consistent throughout the game. And, and it has been, I guess, if you want to say it uh, uh, early, because they've called two of them now for, at the high screens. But I, I'm, I'm scratching my head on the fact that that's a, that's a play that's done on a regular basis in every Coliseum throughout the country. I don't understand how all of a sudden it becomes a foul. Five-point Illinois State lead at 13-8. Tabler, another deep three. Wow. He's two out of two. Those are deep threes. Yes, those are. And, and two, two quick threes gives him six quick points, and they're right back in the ball game. It's a two-point game. He hurt the Redbirds last year with seven points in just 17 minutes. 
Oguchi tried to answer from the corner. It's no good. And now Wright State with a little momentum. A jump shot here ties the game. Travel. Travel. No so doubt. So that's the uh, sixth turnover for Wright State. And again, it's 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 not unforced errors that Wright State has made. It is forced errors because of the intensity of the Redbird defense. Once again, they picked up their dribble and they had nowhere to go with the, the pass. The Birds had their men all covered so well. Emmanuel Holloway has now come back in to give Osiris Eldridge a, a breather. So the Redbirds again with a, a smaller lineup on, on the floor right now with Phillips and uh, Odzik out there along with uh, Timo Odiakosa oh, inside, laid it in. What a marvelous pass that time by Lloyd Phillips. If you can penetrate into the paint, you attract other defenders, which, uh, which sets up your post players, and that time you saw it happen. Redbirds again with four perimeter players and Odiakosa on the floor right now. And that's a small, small lineup, those, those four perimeters right now. That is truly small. Brown's turnaround jumper is no good. Odiakosa clears for the Birds, who have a four-point lead in the basketball here. Holloway penetrates, floater, missed. Odiakosa with the board. Now it's Phillips. Almost lost it. Aguchi's three. Redbridge did a nice job of finding the open player, but Champ couldn't knock down the jumper. We talked earlier about making the extra pass. They did it on that sequence. It just didn't go down, but they know, know what, to, what to do and how to attack the, the defense. Brown's three is rimmed out. So he's 0 for 3 from the field so far, the uh, preseason second teamer in the Horizon League. He sure looked like he's, he's pressing to get that first shot to go down. And that time, Oguchi drove right around him and drew the foul on Todd Brown. Brown, Again. The Brown is also a part of me. Brown is also from Canton, Ohio. We'll come back and complete that thought. The Redbirds have a 15 to 11 lead, 10.40 to go here, opening half. Back with more from Wright State in a minute. You're on Comcast. For over 60 years, Van Gundy Insurance has been building solid partnerships in Central Illinois by providing business insurance, workers' compensation, and employee benefits. Work with an independent agency who understands your need to have the correct coverage at a competitive price, and then insure with confidence at the Van Gundy Agency. Visit our enhanced website at vangundy.com to discover how Van Gundy Agency can meet your insurance needs. In 1953, the Luca Grill introduced pizza to Central Illinois. As the story goes, John Baldini was visiting his future wife, Virginia, in St. Louis. They stopped into a restaurant in a small neighborhood called The Hill. The couple fell in love with the cracker-thin crust of the pizza. And each other. John, always the smooth-talking statesman, managed to get a copy of the recipe. John's father reluctantly let the boys try their new idea in the restaurant. John's brother, Todd, dismissed pizza as a fad that would soon fade away. Todd was wrong. Should be mentioned, Todd was a Cubs fan. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington, or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. Well, the Redbirds are not supposed to be able to score on dribble penetration against this kind of defense, but they sure did here, Bob. Well, that was just an outstanding setup that time by Lloyd Phillips. He, he drew number 15, Kyle Presley, the freshman post player for the Raiders, over to him, and that allowed Odiakosa to be wide open as he dropped it across for the easy lay-in. Great job that time by being under control. You don't want to leave your feet. You don't want to be going so fast that you're not in control and able to make those kind of passes. So that's what your point guard has to be able to do. And we saw a great job right there of it being executed by Lloyd Phillips. Odzik, Okucha, Okuchi, Odiakosa, Phillips, and Holloway, the five on the floor right now for the Redbirds, who have the lead in the basketball. It's 15 to 11, season opener here at Wright State University. Good start for the Redbirds.
Both teams have gone exclusively with man-to-man -man defenses. Holloway to the baseline. Floater can't go. Tipped out. Aguchi, he'll try a three. That's good, so that worked out. The Redbirds missed the two and got the three. Well, it worked out because Emmanuel Holloway stuck with the play. He put a shot up that was contested, but then on the rebound got his hand on it and was able to tip it out to Champ, and Champ was able to be wide open and knock her down. Champ Aguchi quickly with eight points. He's got a pair of three-point makes for the Redbirds. And a reach-in foul against Illinois State. And again, they're on the opposite end of the court. We saw dribble penetration into the middle, put somebody from the help side defense into a situation where they had to foul to stop the penetration. So that's a real key thing in wide open offensive attacks is that people get into that middle because they can make things happen. And you, defensively, you got to be able to shut that down. And that's the sixth team foul against the Redbirds. And so now Wright State is in the bonus for the rest of the half. Another three from the corner, and it's going to be a foul. That oh. time, Cooper Land put up a three from the corner, was fouled after the shot, so he's going to get three free throws out of the deal. That was a Q-tip foul, if you've ever seen one there. That was about as soft as could be. Let's take a look at it here on our monitor. We're going to see the kick out. There's dribble penetration, kick out. Odiacosa goes out, and it goes just out of the, the base of our screen. But in my opinion, that, hey, come on, this is Division I basketball. Let's play. Second foul now against Dima Odiacosa. Brandon Sampe is at the scores table. He'll likely check in now for Dima with those two fouls. And that, that's not at all what the Redbirds needed to have happen with nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Because now you, you can bet that uh, Dima Odiacosa is going to have to set the remainder of the half. That, again, then in, in turn stretches Brandon Sampe's minutes early in the game, and they're trying to preserve and conserve those minutes for him as, as the game goes on. Cooper Land trying to make three out of three. His father, Bill, by the way, is the play-by-play -play voice of the San Antonio Spurs, so do you think he's seen some pretty good basketball in the last so oh, eight or ten years? <laughs> I bet there is no doubt who he roots for when, when the NBA playoffs get going. And he makes good on all three free throws. So Sam Pei and Odiacosa are back in for Illinois State. Corey Cooperwood, the junior college transfer, is now back in for Wright State. And a steal by Duggins in and out of his hands. Odzik picks it up for the Redbirds and travel. Well, once again, that time we got pen dribble penetration, but it was out of control penetration. We've got to get that same type of action but it's got to be in control where a play can be made. Phillips is hounding Gardner. He who just then turned it back over. There we go. <laughs> you can tell it's early in the season. Right now, coaches are pulling their hair out because they're getting partially of what they want, but they're being teased because once they, they can't complete it because once they get there, they turn it over. Aguchi, top of the circle. His three is missed. Eldridge, offensive rebound. Oh, they called the carry of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the seventh Illinois State turnover, which matches Wright State's total here in the first, uh, what, 11 minutes exactly now in this college basketball season. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris with you on Comcast. We want to welcome the fans in the Dayton area that are watching us on the Ohio News Network. Glad you're alongside season opener, Illinois State and Wright State. Missouri Valley Conference against the Horizon League. Here's Brown, 12-footer. Front of the rim rolls in. That was a friendly, friendly rim bounce, no doubt about it. That's good shooter's touch. Todd Brown, about 13 points a game last year at 12.7, his first basket of this season. I think that's good defense with eight and a half minutes. The first time you get Todd Brown on the scoreboard. Lloyd Phillips three. That's good. Redbird make that extra pass, as you said, Bob. Found the open man. It was Phillips who drained the three. And when you make the extra pass, the shooter has his legs set and ready to let it go. Tenacious defense here by the Birds. And nice then there's a breakdown. Down low. Gardner passing to Cooper Wood for the jam. Well, once again, 
as I was complimenting them, they had a breakdown because the dribble penetration took the ball into the paint, which meant a post player had to step up to cut him off and help. That left a post player down low, wide open. Once again, we see it on this end. Sante gives it up to Osdick now. That was the first basket of the year, by the way, for Corey Cooperwood, the two-time junior college All-American at Wallace State, which is in Georgia. Check that, that's in Alabama. And a foul with just two seconds, with six seconds to go on the uh, shot clock is going to go against Wright State. Well, good recognition by Champo Gucci that time to put the ball on the floor, take it to the hoop, draw the foul. Officials timeout. Redbirds with a three-point lead at Wright State. Back with more in a minute from the Nutter Center. Wait, turn that trash into cash. Recycling aluminum cans is good for the environment and a great way to earn some extra money. The Morris Tick Recycling Center is Central Illinois' place to recycle aluminum cans as well as other metals, including iron, brass, copper, aluminum, and stainless. Whether you want to make money for your organization, church, or school, or need some extra cash to feed the gas pump, recycling is the way to go green. Wednesdays, seniors 55 and older receive 5 cents over the face price for aluminum cans. The Morris Tick Company, recycling since 1898. Call 309-828-6084 for more information. Hey, baby. I'm gonna go work out, all right? Okay, be careful in there. Whatever. You're not as strong as you think you are. You start off fine, but then it ends badly. Fortunately, there's OSMC, a team of orthopedic specialists offering same-day appointments. Because when you're in pain, you shouldn't have to wait. Three o'clock today, sweetie. OSMC, four, five, four, sixteen, sixteen. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. Back here at Wright State, and here's that nicely executed backdoor play by the Raiders. Well, you saw the help defense from Champa Gucci to have to come up high, and there wasn't any rotation to cover his man down low, and that led to the easy bounce pass dunk. Good pass that time by Gardner. Good finish by Cooperwood. We mentioned he's from Arkansas. Played his junior college basketball at Alabama, where he averaged 15 points and eight rebounds a game last year as a sophomore at Wallace State Community College, again in Alabama. Here's Emmanuel Holloway. We approach the seven-minute mark left here in this first half. Phillips penetration floater is good, and a foul, or it's an offensive. They're going to count the basket and say the foul is against Illinois State, it appears, against Phillips. Oh, goodness, goodness. So count the basket, however, charge Phillips with the foul. I always, I have never liked that. As you see it on the replay, he goes up, he releases the ball, and there's, if you're set that far underneath the rim, that's not a foul on the offensive player. You should not be able to take a charge underneath the rim. That, I, that, that's, that's, a, that's understood, I thought, everywhere in basketball land. So if you've released the ball and, and you're set underneath the rim, which on the replay we saw that it was, then that's, that's just, I think, an error in a call. That was, again, great penetration by Lloyd Phillips to get there. But it was only half a reward because, yes, he got the basket, but the points get negated because they get to go down and shoot two free throws. And Kellen Thornton, the 6'7 freshman from Chicago, is now in the game for Illinois State as Cooper Land now has made five out of five from the foul line. So we're seeing Kellen Thornton for the first time. And he, he uh, kind of tweaked an ankle in practice yesterday and was a little bit hobbly this morning during the shoot-around. So we'll see how he reacts to some, uh, some action here now. He's a full-court pressure coming up here by Wright State. Yes, it is. And, and I mean, the birds have really gone small now with, with taking Sampe out of the game. And I'm, go I'm going to take it a step further, say, than Kellen Thornton did more than tweak it. He rolled that baby good. And he was limping profusely on it this afternoon to shoot around. Birds being patient on the offensive end with this lineup out here right now. I think that's a good decision and a good choice. Offensive foul against Phillips. That's his second. 
in as many offensive possessions. The Redbirds are piling up the fouls now here, Bob, which is exactly what you said they can't afford to do. Here's the replay of it as he goes in there. Yeah, there's no question on that one. That's not underneath the rim. That's 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 a good charge call by the officials on that one. You got to be able to make that pass and avoid that charge. Whether you stop, whether you step around it, whatever the case might be, you just have to have better body control than that. Phillips, Odiacosa, and Holtz, each with two fouls for the Redbirds, who have nine as a team now. And so Phillips goes to the Redbird bench. Siad Odzik is in the game now, along with Holloway in the backcourt. Open three, Duggins missed. Offensive rebound by Grody. Stole. But it's picked away by the Redbirds. Oh, now it's Cyrus Eldridge yeah. with the steal. Back up the floor. Here's Eldridge. He's going to try a three. That is missed. A little quick, I think. He pulled the trigger a little quick on that one. He wasn't quite ready. Looks like Eldridge is still trying to get into the flow of this basketball game, even after that nice dunk that he had earlier. Well, you got to give Wright State credit on defense. He did a good job of pounding him everywhere he goes. Agreed. Great defensive sequence right there. The defense is keeping both teams in the game. Aguchi, first player in double figures now. He has three three-point shots, give him 11 for the game. Now we've got the officials bringing two players together. You know, I love seeing that. If there's a difference on the court, on the, on the court and we'll see the replay here, that obviously there's some form of a lead into some type of pushing, shoving, and altercation of some nature, rather than making the call. Yeah, that's a great job of officiating. Bring the two young men together and say, hey, fellas, let's not get carried away. I don't want to, I don't want anybody else in foul trouble. Let's let's clean it up. And I think to be commended right there. That was at the corner right of the screen between Kellen Thornton and Vaughn Duggins. So the officials quickly squelched that before it could get any deeper. And there's another three for Wright State's Troy Tabler. He's got three threes. He's the one that's been putting the dagger into Redbird's heart right now. He, he's found the range nobody else from Wright State has from outside. And a steal by the Raiders. Back up the floor now. A three ball will tie it. And it's going to be Aguji who gets his hands in the passing lane. Back up the Redbirds. Eldridge. Open is Holloway. His corner jumper from the wing is good, and that's a three. All right. I, I, the Redbirds' defense is their offense in this first half for all practical purposes. Most of their offense has come from steals. Yeah, six steals for the Redbirds. And I got to believe they've converted points out of almost all of them. 13 points off turnovers for Illinois State of their 29. Four and a half to go here in this opening half and a six-point Redbird lead. And another steal. Emmanuel Holloway all by his lonesome. Goes up. Has a nice little polite Q-tip dunk. Again, a softy. Whatever you want to call it, it was two points for the Birds on another steal. And five straight points now for Holloway, who, as we mentioned, had a career-high 16 against the Raiders last year. And Thornton gets his hands on a steal. And now it's a Gucci. Two on one. He leaves again for O. Oh, my. Oh, my. Do those two know how to run that act together or what? Folks, this is something that if anybody thought the two of the stars were going to have trouble meshing together for the Birds, this is squelching those ideas. Again... A lob from a Gucci to Osiris Eldridge, which is started on the defensive end off of a steal. And I, I think the thing that's probably... All right, let's take a look on, a, on the screen here. We'll see there's the steal by Kellen Thornton creating the turnover that Champa Gucci gets. He sets up the defense by the dribble and then lost a soft, easy pass over. And Osiris once again finishes with a slam. I think to finish my thought on the defense... The Redbirds coaching staff have to be so excited because the steals are coming from a variety of players. It isn't just one or two that's stripping the, the right state players. Everybody out there for the Redbirds is getting their hands out in the passing lanes and they're being active. And, and we talked about the different styles of defenses that these two teams have. The right state being a soft man-to-man -man and the Redbirds being an aggressive get-up-in-your-grill type man-to-man. -man. How about the Redbird debut of Champ Aguchi? 11 points, huh? And a, and a couple of terrific assists. And steals. And rebounds as he brings that one down. The Redbird lead quickly is 10 at 33-23. Gucci looks to get a screen that time from Thornton, but gives it up to Eldridge instead. We're at the three and a half minute mark left here, opening half from the Nutter Center. 
pull-up jumper from Eldridge. That's good. Oh now, my. if those start going in, look out. Because that was just a, I'm going to beat you one-on-one -on -one from 20 feet out. All of a sudden, it's a 12-point bulge, Kurt. Who would have thought that? Here's Tabler. He's had the hot hand from the three-point line for Wright State. Brown goes around Holloway, drew contact. The foul's going to be on Kellen Thornton. He bailed him out because he was off balance and, and going to have to throw up a sloppy shot. And Kellen Thornton, once again, you see the inexperience of a freshman, have to play some quality minutes. He came over and wasn't in position. Brown has free throws when we come back. 3.05 to go first half. Redbirds 35, Wright State 23. Back with more from Dayton in a minute. These are unique money times. Low fixed rates, taxes, risk, all make people uneasy. Traditional methods of saving and investing haven't worked as well recently. What should you do with your 401ks and your IRAs? There are investment alternatives that guarantee principal, give you the upside potential of the market, and shelter everything from current taxes. If safety and growth are important to you, call us to find out about these alternatives. For 29 years at the Cagle Financial Center, we've been providing safe and sound financial guidance. Let's talk and make sure your money's safe. Schooners is what comes to mind when you say neighborhood bar and grill. Independently owned and operated, Schooners opened its doors in 1983. Schooners has been a neighborhood tradition, serving delicious foods like beer battered chicken, buffalo wings, the Schooner Burger, fresh garden salads and homemade soups, the famous King Tenderloin, and try our new mini tenderloin platter. Schooners offers blue plate specials every weekday from 11 to 2 featuring homemade items. Come on in and let me fix something fresh for you today. Taste the local flavor at Schooners, 829-6841. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. Back here at Wright State where the Illinois State lead is 12 and it's been the Redbird defense. Here Holloway a pick and an easy lane. That's once again great anticipation by Emmanuel Holloway on that, realizing that his man had turned his back and went away to set a screen. He seen it, keeping his eye on the ball, got a great pick, got a good steal, got a great look, went down, laid it in nice and easily. The Redbirds have eight first-half steals. Now, that would be a wonderful number for a game. But they've yeah. got eight steals, and we still have three minutes to go in the half. Well, you know, it's the first game of the year, and you can't simulate in practice the quality of defense that the Redbirds are going to throw at you in a game. And I think Wright State is stumbling from that. They don't see that kind of quickness in, in the ability to anticipate as the birds are throwing at them. Quality player in Todd Brown makes both of his foul shots. Again, we mentioned he's a second team, all Horizon League preseason pick. He and Vaughn Duggins will be a terrific pair in the Horizon League this year to keep your eyes on. Sampe back in for the final three minute run here of the first half. The birds need to see to it that they close the deal here on this first half. There's Sam Pay with the soft touch. He just backed his way down and shot right over the top of Kyle Presley. I think he believes he can do that anytime he wants. Back his way down in a one-on-one -on -one scenario and get his shot. Sam Pay with his first field goal. Here's Brown down the lane, left hand and in. Once again, dribble penetration to the middle. It caught the weak side defender not looking and it was a great lay-in and immediately tim jankovic says okay here's the deal fellas we said in the scouting report that we can't let number 21 get free and that's what's happened well his outside shot hasn't been falling for him so he he's doing what good players do he takes it to the basket as we see here on the replay and osiris eldridge did not get over in time to rotate and cut it cut him off as he came through so you saw an easy lay-in that time that's a that's an intelligent ball player that realizes my outside shot struggling right now, so I got to do something to help my team. So he put it in the floor and took it to the hole. There's a lot to like about the game 
that's inside Todd Brown. He's, he's oh, yeah. a good package there to have. Yeah, no question about that. Let's go back a little bit about the finishing of this half here. And, and I think it's really important that the Birds close this out in an impressive fashion. Not that they run up any bigger point, but they try to keep it right at 10 points or, or more so that Wright State doesn't go into the locker room with any momentum. The Birds have it all and have kind of depressed and deflated the Wright State Raiders. Ten-point Redbird lead as we approach the two-minute mark left here in this opening half. Good overplay that time by Graham. He stepped in the passing lane to knock it out of bounds. Which is something that's unusual. It, you're seeing them making adjustments. They don't like to get out there like that because they believe it gives up too much dribble penetration. They like to stay in sag and take away that dribble penetration, and you've seen that in the charges that have been taken. Isolation inside. Oh, Sam oh. had the ball poked away from him, and back come the Raiders now. Brown gives it up to Graham, who laid it in. When the ball goes into the post that time to Sampe, he stood too long. He's got to be active once he gets it. He can't make his back down move slow and methodical. He's got to be quick off the dribble or he's moved. Six straight points now for Wright State. Oguchi misses the three pointer. Minute and a half remaining. A lot to be determined in this. Graham again, and one. Backdoor cut once again. The birds knows it, know it's coming, but they got caught with, with, with just kind of asleep at the wheel right there. We'll see it right here on replay. Good pass. Brandon Sampe a little slow on his rotation, and he yes, definitely made body contact. Cuts into that what was that 10-point lead. Now is six, could be five. That also puts two fouls, I believe, on Brandon Sampe. So that Sampe and uh, Odia Cosa, both, right. both post players for the Redbirds, on the bench with two. Kellen Thornton enters back into the game to pick up that post play for the Birds. Full court pressure here, just a simple man-to-man. -man. They're not trapping. A little run and jump at midcourt, but nothing the birds can handle. Seven straight points rattled off now by Wright State, which was once an Illinois State 12 point advantage is down to five at 37 32. That foul is against Troy Tabler of Wright State, his first, and the seventh against Wright State, and so now it's Illinois State in the bonus. Which is a good thing the birds need to keep able to do. They need to keep penetrating and drawing fouls so they can get themselves to the foul line like this. If you remember, Wright State, it was nine and a half minutes, and they started shooting the bonus. Here it is a minute and a half, and the birds are shooting bonus. That's an eight-minute stretch in there that they're shooting a lot of more free throws than we're getting the opportunity to. Well, Eldridge scored just seven points last year against Wright State, which was obsessed with stopping him last year. He was just two of eight from the field in the game at Redbird Arena, and right now Eldridge has seven points total here in the first half of this rematch. Well, that, I'm going to take it as a positive. And they haven't been an easy seven. He's had to work for him. Once again, Wright State is focusing on him whenever he gets his touches. Tabler, pull-up jumper over Odset. Got a hand in there, and that may have altered the shot a little bit. I think it did. He recovered well once the, once he, the pass was completed. We're under a minute to go here in this half. Ball is off the hands of Tampa Gucci and out of bounds. That is what you call an unforced error when, when it goes right through the hands of the recipients who should have caught it. And, and Champ just got, you know, just a momentarily, momentary mental lapse and was thinking what he was going to do once he had the ball and forgot to secure the possession of the ball. Both teams with 11 turnovers. Both teams have shot the ball well once they've had shots. They're both shooting better than 52% in this game. It's just been getting those shots, especially for Wright State because that Redbird defense has been, you know, their hands in the face and hands in the, in the passing lanes. And, and because of that type of defense on both ends, it's 11 turnovers for each squad at this point in the game. And that's going to be a driving Kyle Presley getting to the free throw line. Well, there, there again, you can't let the opposing team's post player, freshman no less, start from the top of the key and dribble his way down, as you see on the replay here. Dribbled all the way to the rim. You've got to be able to shut that off. And that becomes Kellen Thornton's responsibility. That's his man going down. You can't let him break you down like that. So second foul for Thornton. 
Boy, the Redbird Coast players are, are again piling up the fouls. Odia Costa, San Pei, and, and Thornton each with two fouls. But I guess at this point, especially when Odia Costa picked up his second foul and went immediately to the Redbird bench, they're going to get to halftime without him adding to that foul to or trouble. Well, uh, no question with 30, just under 38 seconds left, they're not going to bring either either one of the two big fellows back in. They're going to live with live and die with what we got. And more than likely, and we're going to run a lot of time off the clock on this next possession. Presley redshirted last year, so this is his first game with Wright State. There's a two-second differential between the game and the shot clocks here, so the Redbirds could conceivably hold for about the last shot. And they're spreading it out right now to being very patient, and it appears as if they want to put the ball in the hands of the one and only Osiris Eldridge, and I don't think there's a better person to have it than him. With about eight seconds, and he's going to come get it, and he's going to make something happen. Six on the shot clock. Three to shoot. Pull up three. Top of the circle. That's oh, good. What a dagger. Oh, my. What a dagger. And he's going to get a half-court shot off the turnover, and that almost went down. <laughs> so the Redbirds wind the shot clock down, and Osiris Eldridge fires up a three, his first three of the game. And, and the and Redbird lead is eight at the half at 41-33. They had let it slip from 12 down to five. And that three-pointer right there by Cyrus Eldridge was like a dagger. It just like, he, we see the replay of it here. He just basically kind of toys with his man up front, crosses him, goes up over top, and knocks it down. As they did a good job defending it. But that's just talent beating talent, no question. Halftime at the Nutter Center. Illinois State 41, Wright State 33. We'll have a Redbird Club discussion with Jack Kern when we come back. Eight-point lead for the Redbirds here at the half. Since 1967, Quality Truck Equipment is Bloomington Normal's only truck equipment upfitter. Quality Truck handles the highest quality truck bodies available, from dump trucks to service vehicles and everything in between. Let Quality Truck Equipment's professionals design and install a truck body tailored to your needs. Not only will we save you money up front, our higher quality bodies will far outlast cookie cutter bodies found on car lots. Quality Truck Equipment, conveniently located at 1201 Bell Street in Bloomington. At Broman Healthcare, we reach more hearts. From Bloomington to Eureka and Leroy to Pontiac, we touch more lives with state-of-the-art facilities and expert specialized care. We help you and your loved ones more than we can say. The heart knows no boundaries, neither do we. Contrary to most people's belief, uh, our economy does pretty well even when their national economy is in a recession. People should come to the EDC's annual meeting so they can understand what the Economic Development Council is doing to improve the community. And they should also come because they're going to be inspired by a speech by one of the leading business writers in the country. I think we're very fortunate to have Mr. Carlgaard, and I think he's going to provide us great insight into what we have to look forward to in 2009 and beyond as we build our future. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Beer Nut. Back here at the Nutter Center where Illinois State enjoys a 41-33 halftime lead over Wright State in the season opener. We are now joined by Jack Curran who is the past president of the Redbird Club. There's been some restructuring so your title is no longer the president. What is your title? Well, we're basically, I'm a member of the executive board with the Redbird Club. Uh, we restructured and went to an executive committee, and within the executive committee, we chair various committees on the Redbird Club. We have a fundraising committee, we have a marketing committee, we have a liaison committee, uh, and a special events committee as a part of our Redbird Club. Our various members in the club participate as committee members uh, on those various committees. What exactly, if someone is not familiar with the Redbird Club, how do you describe what the Redbird Club means to Illinois State University? Well, the Redbird Club is the fundraising uh, arm of the athletic department. Um, we raise, all the money we raise goes directly into funding our scholarships for our 400 plus student athletes. Okay. Uh, our average bill uh, across campus to pay for uh, tuition and things of that type for our student athletes is about two and a half million dollars. And the money that we raise through our membership of the Redbird Club goes directly toward funding that scholarship fund. If somebody wants to be involved with the Redbird Club, how do they come on board? It's real easy. Uh, 
we can contact our development office at, at the athletic department. You can call Annie uh, Campbell at 438-3803. Uh, She'll uh, handle all your inquiries, and it's very easy to join. Uh, we start out with mem uh, minimum memberships of $100, and it goes right on up the scale to whatever a person is willing to give. What are the benefits of being a member of the Redbird Club? Well, the benefits of the Redbird Club, first of all, the Redbird Club, uh, it's a very easy uh, sell, in my opinion. Uh, with with uh, funding the scholarships for our student athletes, they are uh, very committed in the community. Their grade point average overall is 3.05. So when the folks join the Redbird Club, at whatever level they give, then there there is benefit uh, accorded to those various levels. And, of course, you get a chance to be around the Redbird athletes. You see the swimmers, the tennis players, the football players, the basketball players, and develop relationships. We, we evolve some relationships, and I think the great thing about being involved with the Redbird Club and our student athletes, they're great people, they're great young men and women, and they truly are student athletes. Uh, not only do they do well in the court or on their fields they participate in, but they do well in the classroom, as I said. In addition, they had over 2,000 community hours within the Bloomington Normal area in the last year. So they are quality young men and women, and that's one reason I'm a part of the Redbird Club, and it's easy to sit here and talk to you about those student athletes. Thanks for the visit. We know that you drove over here, and uh, you're ready to support the Redbirds, and they've had a good first half. Good first half. Let's finish it off. Thanks, Jack. Jack Thanks, Kern, the uh, past president, again, of the uh, Redbird Club and still a very active member as well. Back with those halftime numbers for you, 41-33, Illinois State over Wright State at the half here in Dayton at the Nutter Center. They're coming from 30 to 50 miles away for good reason. Brad Barker Hunt is having November's biggest garage sale. We have some 08s with special savings. 2009 with 1.9%. Right. The restyled 09 Civics, 34 miles per gallon. Wow, what a bargain. 1.9% 09 Pilots, CRVs, Odysseys, Ridgelines, and Elements. November's biggest garage sale at Brad Barker Honda. If you want savings and bargains, get here now for fun savings and cars. Products don't know how to find customers, but Comcast Spotlight does, with a mix of on-air, online, and on-demand advertising. You can reach your customers wherever they are. For over 60 years, Van Gundy Insurance has been building solid partnerships in Central Illinois by providing business insurance, workers' compensation, and employee benefits. Work with an independent agency who understands your need to have the correct coverage at a competitive price, and then insure with confidence at the Van Gundy Agency. Visit our enhanced website at vangundy.com to discover how Van Gundy Agency can meet your insurance needs. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Beer Nut. Halftime of the season opener here at Wright State University where it's Illinois State 41 and Wright State 33. Kurt Pegler and Bob Morris along the lines of Comcast here. And we welcome again the fans in the Dayton area that are watching us on the Ohio News Network. Glad you're alongside. Entertaining first half. We knew that, uh, what did we say at the top of the broadcast, that uh, the first team to 60 would win. We thought the final scores would be in the 50s. So I think the Redbird coaching staff is probably happy with 41 first half points. Not only do I think they're ecstatic with it, I think they're surprised by it, too. And, and you know, 53% shooting from the floor has done it, but the 53% has been based on the fact that we've created 11 turnovers, and we have been able to turn those into points. The, the defense that the Redbirds are playing is what the, the coaching staff is preaching in that locker room right now. I promise you, they are excited about the the level of energy, the quality of the defense. Now we've got to be able to finish that off with not quite as many fouls. And, and if we can do that, then I think we're set for a good run in the second half. On the other hand, you got Wright State. They're shooting 52% from the floor, and they also have created 11 turnovers, but they haven't been able to turn all of those turnovers into as many points as the Redbirds have. Well, that's the key right here. We, we talk about eight first-half steals for Illinois State, so you figure of the 11 Wright State turnovers, eight have come off the Redbird defense as far as the steals are concerned. And Illinois State has 17 points off those turnovers as opposed to the 10 points off turnovers that the Raiders have. And I think when you're looking at the halftime stat sheet, that's what jumps out at you. Well, that, and then I'm going to go right along with it in the fact that the Redbirds have 13 rebounds, Kurt, to the eight from Wright State. 
eight rebounds and a half is incredible that you've held a team down to that many. But if you watch, the bulk of the Wright State shots, offensively they take are perimeter shots, and then they're not real strong at hitting the boards on the defense. We've got how many offensive rebounds here? I don't know that I see that breakdown. I just have a total number in front. But we've been able to secure a, a handful of offensive boards, 13 to 8. When you can hold the other team to a single digit total rebounds and a half, you've done your job. And again, a lot of that goes back to you're in the right position defensively because you're blocking people off. You're getting the rebound. They're not. And, and I, you know, I, I just think the birds should be commended for that. So tell me what you think we're going to see here in the... Uh in the second half. Again, here's one of those steals that we talked about with Osiris Eldridge coming in. And this, he and, and Champa Gucci, uh, in their first game together, have looked terrific. They did. That's, that's the first of the second steal and slam dunk on the other end by those two. And, and, and on the screen now, that for the viewers, we're going to see one of the penetration and kick down to and a defensive breakdown by the Birds as they get a dunk that time by Corey Cooperwood, the junior college All-American that is a junior transfer in this year. Here we see coming in on the from, on the replay, we see the second steal, pass, dunk, Redbirds. It's it's to me that's just that's perfect. That's the epitome of what how you want a defensive turnover to end is with a dunk on the other end, and that's just such that's like a home run in baseball or the the bomb in football. It's just the epitome of what you've tried to instill into your kids' minds of that's what gets you success. And and you've seen that several times in this first half. I think the coaching staff from the Redbirds have to be pleasantly surprised with the limited number of personnel that they have coming into this game with what's been accomplished up to this point. Halftime here at the Nutter Center again, Illinois State with an eight-point lead, 41-33. Back with more from Wright State in just a moment. Hey, baby. I'm gonna go work out, all right? Okay, be careful in there. Whatever. You're not as strong as you think you are. You start off fine, but then it ends badly. Fortunately, there's OSMC, a team of orthopedic specialists offering same-day appointments. Because when you're in pain, you shouldn't have to wait. Three o'clock today, sweetie. OSMC, four five four sixteen sixteen. Will Rogers said, "Don't talk to me about the return on my money. Talk to me about the return." of my money. Just guarantee it and make sure it's going to be there. In 29 years of helping individuals with their investment and savings plans, people have one desire in regard to their money above all others, and that is for safety. Today there are ways to experience the potential of market-type rates of return while protecting your principal. If this strategy, growth with safety, is appealing to you, contact us today and we'll show you exciting new alternatives for your money to help it grow and keep it safe at the same time. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Beer Nut. Halftime here at Wright State, where Illinois State owns an eight-point lead after the first 20 minutes of play. It's Illinois State 41 and Wright State 33. Okay, Bob, let's revisit your keys to the game that we talked about at the top of the broadcast and see how things are happening in the first 20 minutes of play. I think that's a fair thing to do. All right, the first thing I mentioned was they had to control the dynamic duo of Huggins and Brown and not let either one of them go off and kill them or the combination of the two kill the Redbirds. Right now, Huggins, or excuse me, Dugans has two points and Brown has six for a total of eight. I don't think that's killing anybody right now. The second point we made was you have to play aggressive defense without being in foul trouble. We're walking a thin line on that one, but we didn't get anybody with three fouls. So I think now that you go into the second half with, with three fouls remaining, then I think that's a safe way to say that we're okay right there. We're not great, but we're okay. And a lot of the aggressive defense was the result resulted in our getting steals and the lay-ins on the, on the other end. So I think they can live with where they're at in that regard. The third point was making the extra pass to create points. You see on the, on the screen right now, there was the extra pass being made to the wide open Champaguchi as he knocked down a three-pointer. So I think pretty much they're on track for the three keys. And Aguchi is the game's leading scorer. He has made 
three three-pointers tonight as part of his 11 points for the Redbirds. Osiris Eldridge is also in double figures. He has 10, so the two wing players for the Redbirds, 21 of their 41. And right now the leading scorer actually for Wright State is Troy Tabler, who has nine points, all of them on three-point shooting. He knocked down three threes about midway through the first half, has not scored since then. But the Redbirds have done a nice job of keeping the two big scoring threats, Vaughn Duggins and Todd Brown, relatively quiet in this game. Brown with six, and Duggins hit a, hit a jumper very early in the game in about the first two, two and a half minutes, and did not score the rest of the half. Well, you're right. That, that I think, was a real key that they... they they, they have really closed down on the wings out there. They, they have eight points total out of the 33 combined, or excuse me, they have eight points combined for the 33 total. You talked about Tabler knocking down three threes earlier in the half, and then, they, then he hasn't been heard from it. Let me tell you, there was a defensive switch that, that took place out there. And after a timeout, the Birds made a, a change from the coaching staff perspective that every time Tabler was involved with a perimeter handoff and a screen, you switch on him. You never give him the half-step advantage because he was knocking down shots. That kept him from being able to turn the corner and getting, getting an open look. So I think that was a real key to shutting him down the last five to seven minutes remaining in the half. Also, I want to follow that up, Kurt, with on the other end, offensively speaking for the Redbirds, I think the three-point shot that Osiris Eldridge hit right at the end of the half was a real dagger. It, you know, sometimes you can hit hit three-pointers, and they're big baskets, obviously, but some hurt worse than others. That one, they had made a run. They had made a run. They cut a 12-point lead down to five, and then, boom, that three-pointer makes it eight and puts it back, puts some breath back into that life of the Redbirds once again going, we got them. We got them. And, and I think that was really important right before the half. And that is our Broman Healthcare Halftime Report with Illinois State, an eight-point advantage at... 41-33 as both teams have come back on the floor here. We're getting ready to start this second 20 minutes of play. Season opener for both teams. Again, both clubs last year winning better than 20 games. The Redbirds at 25-10 and 10, making the NIT. Wright State at 21-10 and 10, did not get a postseason bid and was home in the month of March. And I think the Raiders can look back to what happened at Redbird Arena as kind of the beginning of the end. They came into that game in normal with a 20-6 and six record. Lost to the Redbirds, then lost to Butler, then lost to Valpo heading into the Horizon Tournament, and things kind of went downhill after that, and they were home at 21 and 10 with a very respectable record. That's right, and, and as we, you know, as many of us had have followed the postseason selections last year, that one of the things that they really look at is the uh, how you finish your year out. And as you said, the Redbirds created the uh, beginning of the end for the Raiders. Wright State starts this second half with the basketball. Corey Cooperwood, Todd Brown, Will Graham, Ronnie Thomas, and Vaughn Duggins, the five that started the game for Wright State, open the second half. Same for the Illinois State. Osiris Eldridge, Emmanuel Holloway, Lloyd Phillips, Champaguchi, Dima Odiacosa starts the second half. First shot of the half is by Brown. It's missed. It's going to oh. be a foul against the Redbirds, though. Is that going to be against Phillips? Nope. That's on Dima Odiacosa, which will be his third foul within the first, uh, what, about 25 seconds here of the second half play. And, and that's not how the birds wanted to. They, they got a forced shot up, but we did not get a block off on the weak side and created a foul. Thomas off the lob. He scores from in close. Little baby hook. Well, and there you saw the results of the third foul early. Dima Odiacosa was not able to go up and challenge that shot. He had to stay on the floor, flat-footed. Therefore, he's able to be able to shout over top of him. First points of the game for Ronnie Thomas, one of two transfers from Duquesne on the... Wright State Raiders roster. Gucci tips out the missed shot from Eldridge, and so the Redbirds have an offensive rebound and another look at the basket. We're seeing a defensive change, I think, in Wright State. I'll have to look, but they're in a 1-2-2 zone, the best I can tell right now. Yes, they are. Odia Cosa in trouble, gives it up to Phillips. Lots of time left on the shot clock. Good recognition by the Birds, and they're going to make an offensive adjustment according to the defense. Seven on the shot clock now. Eldridge, three. Missed it. Offensive rebound of Gucci. Eldridge again. Floater, baseline, missed. He was not expecting to pass back, and he had to throw the ball up before he ran out of bounds. Now it's Duggins. His three is good, and so five straight points for Wright State out of the gun here to open the second half. Well, 
not obviously how the birds wanted things to come out and start the second half but Wright State has made a very tactical change in the fact that they've realized that we can't guard ISU man to man so they went zone. Odiakosa with three fouls aggressively to the rack and he's going to get a three point opportunity. Great ball movement. The first time the birds saw the defense changed by the Wright State Raiders they went on a perimeter attack. You'll see on the replay, they move the ball, they get it back, they find Odiakosa down low, and he attacks the basket from the low post. Got to be able to attack the low post so that it opens up and gives you better looks in the outside. You can't just look at the outside only. Good job by the Breadbirds recognizing some weakness. Hard to believe that that young man has only been playing organized basketball for six years. That, that is just incredible. And three of them have been at Illinois State. So, I mean, that's, there was not much time prior to arriving on... ISU's campus that he was playing ball. It helps to have a six foot eight, 240 pound body though, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thomas the miss. It's going to be over the back that time. The foul's going to go against Cooperwood as he went over the back of Aguchi. Well, I could tell you what was preached in the Raider locker room at halftime about how soft they were in the boards, only having eight total rebounds. And that right there is a result of that halftime lecture. They went crashing the offensive boards, but the birds had, the Redbirds had position and drew the foul. Showing some patience against the zone. This is going to slow the game down. No question about it. It's going to slow the game down. You just got to be selective in your shots. Here's Eldridge. One-on-one -on -one with Duggins. Seven on the clock. Phillips three. Top of the circle. Not, a, not, not in my opinion what you want to get out of it. You got to look to get some dribble penetration to distort the zone. And when you get it distorted, then you've got passing angles that open up and you've got shots that come from that. So you, we didn't get enough. We got a lot of ball pass on the perimeter, but we didn't get any dribble penetration. John David Gardner in for Wright State. Corey Cooperwood out. He's the one that picked up that over the back foul. So Cooperwood with his two fouls to the Wright State bench. We're just underway here, second half, 44. 38, Illinois State over Wright State, season opener for both schools. Illinois State hadn't changed a thing on, on the defensive look. They're in their man-to-man. -man. They believe in it. They're going to stick with it. And I tell you, it's a real gamble by the Redbird coaching staff to leave Odiacosa on the floor at this amount of time with three fouls this early. He's got to play smart. Phillips behind the screen from Odiacosa. Now Wright State has switched and gone back to their loose man-to-man. -man. Eldridge splits the defenders and drew contact. It's going to be a reach-in foul against the Raiders. Back to what I've been talking about most of the evening, and I'm sure I'm sounding like a broken record, but that dribble penetration into the paint usually draws shot opportunities or draws fouls. There you see the replay. They cheat on the help side. He splits them, comes down, fouls on Todd Brown. From the Redbirds' perspective, again, that's a that's a person you like to see get in foul trouble. Second team, uh, second foul on Brown. Redbirds showing some patience here against this off, or excuse me, against this defense. Aguchi missed it. Odiakosa hmm. fought for it, but it was tipped away. Back comes Wright State. This is Duggins in the front court. His pull-up three from the top of the circle is short. Long rebound out to Odiacosa. Boy, he went after that one. That ball did not come to him. He went to it. Great find. Good pass. Holloway three ball right in front of the Redbird bench. That's what I'm talking about on dribble penetration. Have your head up. Be under control. Find the open man and drain it when he's there. Emmanuel Holloway now has hit both of his three-point attempts. Give him eight points on the night. Give the Redbirds a 47-38 advantage. Here's Brown. Now it's Graham. His three. No good. Long rebound tip out. Foul against Illinois State. Yeah, that one was. Once again, when you shoot three-point shots, they're going to be long, going to be long rebounds. And when that happens, then it's it's kind of not who has position. It's just whoever is able to get there first. Foul on Emmanuel Holloway. Timeout on the floor. Redbirds with a nine-point lead here at Wright State. Back with more from the Nutter Center in just a moment. Contrary to most people's belief, uh, our economy does pretty well 
even when their national economy is in a recession. People should come to the EDC's annual meeting so they can understand what the Economic Development Council is doing to improve the community. And they should also come because they're going to be inspired by a speech by one of the leading business writers in the country. I think we're very fortunate to have Mr. Carl Gard, and I think he's going to provide us great insight into what we have to look forward to in 2009 and beyond as we build our future. Can you believe this? I'm the only photo he has of his great-grandfather, and he stores me like this. Heat, cold, humidity, mold, mildew, and bugs. Do you know what they do to a valued family heirloom like me? Uncle Bill's Climate Controlled Storage provides the perfect environment for your valuables. Their temperature-controlled rooms keep the humidity down and help prevent mold, rust, and paper rot. Uncle Bill's Climate Controlled Storage. 451-4500. Products don't know how to find customers, but Comcast Spotlight does, with a mix of on-air, online, and on-demand advertising. You can reach your customers wherever they are. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. The Illinois State lead is nine. Emmanuel Holloway giving the Redbirds that nine-point lead thanks to this three ball from the corner. Once again, all set up by Lloyd Phillips' penetration. He drew a second defender. They forced the other people to have to rotate, left Holloway open. He had his feet set, went up, stroked it perfectly. Good play. Holloway with a career-high 16-point scoring effort in last year's game against Wright State. He's half that now with eight points. Tonight, quickly done. It was... Uh, Vaughn Duggins catching that and shooting it right away and laid it in. Yep, kind of caught the birds sleeping there. A little napping on defense that time. We've got Sampe in the, in the game right now. And now it's dribble drive penetration and scoring for Holloway. Right now, the Wright State Raiders don't seem to be able to stop the Redbirds from penetrating off the dribble at all. And if that's going to be the case, it could be a long night for the Raiders. Duggins is fouled and he's going to get to the free throw line. And that'll be a three-point attempt, too. Three, three free throws accordingly. Just inside, he was just inside the arch there, but they're okay. going to give him two. All right. I'm sure I got the two lines confused. <laughs> There's only three or four lines out there yeah. anymore in all these gyms, right? Yeah, exactly. That's all. We'll see it here on the replay. And oh, gee, me Christmas. What was I looking at? I'm, hey, whiz. Honest, I haven't been drinking during <laughs> halftime, Kurt. I promise. Duggins is the preseason. All-conference selection for the Raiders from Pendleton, Indiana. He had a 10-point effort at Redbird Arena last year. He was 4 of 15 from the floor, so the Redbirds did a nice job of harassing him last season as well. He had a 24-point scoring night against Bradley, a 22-point scoring night against Chattanooga, and a 21-point scoring night against Marshall. So the man can fill it up. That foul down there was the third foul for Emmanuel Holloway. That's two Redbirds in the first five minutes of the second half that have picked up their third fouls. Dima Odiakosa being the post player and Emmanuel Holloway being the perimeter player. Well, it's certainly note, uh, noteworthy to keep an eye on that. We've mentioned that the Redbirds are, you know, really playing a little short-staffed, if you will, with Bobby uh, Hill's injury and with Brandon Sampe not being 100%. So foul trouble is not something the Redbirds want to be flirting not with. Not at all. And getting a gallant effort from everybody while they're out there. But they got to be able to do it without getting in foul trouble. And that doesn't even include Alex Rubin, who uh, broke his foot. And he's uh, he had surgery late October. is probably not due back until sometime in December as well. So the Birds have just been snake bit with preseason injuries. We've got another whistle against the Redbirds before the inbounds wow. pass. Again, that, that, see that Osdick right there. On <laughs> that was, that, that, you know, it's a questionable call because both players, C. Ed and Dugans, were talking to one another and they both started laughing. You know, Dugans thought it was a funny foul. Presley backs down, shoots it over Sam Payne, missed it, falls on the floor, and the ball's going to go to right state. That time, Presley got the position on Sam Pay, but he had help from Champa Gucci, who dropped down and bothered the shot attempt. Oh, my.
spot. Champagne's down on the yeah. floor, and it's going to be a we got a whistle. Illegal here. screen that time. I believe it was on Dugan. No, Brad Brownell doesn't like that call. He's he's trying to laugh that one off too. Let's see if we can see it from the baseline camera here. It's it's away from the ball, so we're probably not going to see it. And what when 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 Brandon Sampe goes to the floor at 6'8", 240, 245, there's usually a foul involved. Six minutes into this second half, Redbirds with a 49-41 advantage. Here's Lloyd Phillips playing in his first game as an Illinois State Redbird. Junior college transfer from Iowa Western. Deep three, Osiris Eldridge oh. rimmed out. It was there, just wrong type of spin. Gardner down the floor, up, missed. Couldn't finish. No, couldn't finish because the Redbirds initially weren't back, but they recovered well. Hodzik looked inside momentarily to Sampe, now gets him. Sampe draws a double team, turns around, shoots it right over Presley, missed it. Hodzik got the offensive rebound. Oh, great. Hot he was ball. in a tough position right up against the backboard there, but he drew contact. Great hustle just to get the rebound by C. Ed Osdick right there. And he'll be rewarded for his efforts going to the free throw line because he's following the act, act of shooting on a putback. We see right here, Sampe goes up over his man. C. Ed does not have position, but he works his way there to get it. Obtains a rebound, draws a foul, great effort. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Osdick is the transfer from Southern Cal. Came on board last December. He's from suburban Chicago, Niles West. He was actually born in Croatia, moved when he was four years old to escape the escalating violence there. The former Yugoslavia, bilingual, speaks both English and Serbian. And I don't care what language you put it in, that's two points. When he goes to the foul line, that is automatic. Ten point Redbird lead. Which, you know, the Redbirds had an eight point lead at halftime. They've extended it. Is that on Sam Pay? That is. That's on Brandon Sampe, so he's got three now. Correct. Redbirds have really, they're really walking a fine line on fouls right at this point. Emmanuel Holloway, Brandon Sampe, Dima Odiakosa, each with three fouls. And that's three primetime players for the Redbirds. And this time it's going to be a foul against Wright State. But we are seeing a lot of whistles here in this second half away from the basketball and I'm not going to criticize the officials in the fact there has been a lot of a lot of whistle blowing because it's early in the season and that's what happens as the as the season continues players learn to adjust they hold their screens better their feet get properly aligned things of that nature and you won't see as many fouls here's Sam Pei backing down spinning he may have traveled he yeah did. he did he got a little extra one in there he gets excited when he gets the ball down low in a one-on-one scenario because they can't do anything to stop him when he's on the low block. If he's out a little further, then, you know, he, he maybe can't be able to get there because it takes too many dribbles or it's not a good percentage shot. When, when he's on the low block, they've got no answer for him. Dima Odiakosa, even with his three fouls, is now back at the scores table. He's going to check in near steal that time. Lloyd Phillips is right over in the, in the front row there. Just to your left. I thought you were going to catch him. I was going to let the folks on the first row handle that job, I guess. I think that's a good decision. That's a good decision. Real quickly, Kurt, as the second half has started, Wright State has made a run or two at the birds. But the birds keep the, being able to answer and, and keep that spread right at 8, 10 points. They get it down to 5, and then it goes right back to 10. They get it down to 6, and it goes right back to 10. Tabler, he's the three-point shooter. He missed it that time. But it was a contested shot. It wasn't wide open. Those, there's a lot lower percentage on contested shots than those that aren't. Champa Gucci's three oh. is missed. Good shot, wide open, just didn't knock her. Redbirds have cooled off here the last couple of minutes. Presley, baseline jumper, short. Cleared oh by Ogos, uh, uh, <laughs> Odiakosa, and he was nearly tackled there in the backcourt by Presley. And I think that's, that, I mean, the birds would be happy the birds would be happy if Presley goes out there and takes shots. The 6'8 freshman probably not typically doing what he wants to do in, in their offense if he's shooting from 15 feet. So Odiakosa is going to come down and shoot free throws. The Redbirds right now have Champa Gucci, Dima Odiakosa, 
Osiris Eldridge, Emmanuel Holloway, and Siad Adzik on the floor. Checking in now for the Wright State Raiders is end guy Evans. He's in the game along with Troy Tabler, Will Graham, and Vaughn Duggins. Let's see, who am I missing here? Uh, Troy Tabler is the other. Yeah, Troy Tabler is out there. Oh, great defense right there. One on one defense by Champ. He ought to be close to a five count. Woohoo! Here's Thomas. Kick out. This is Graham, top of the circle. Works on Holloway with three fouls. Missed the shot. Aguchi comes down with it. Great job of contesting the shot by Odia Kosa and a great job of rotating down and getting the rebound by Oguchi. Here's Aguchi from the corner. He's going to throw up another three. That's missed. Another offensive rebound by Siad Odzik. And now it's going to be a three from the other side from oh Eldred. Oh, my. What a killer. What a killer. You've got to give big-time props to Odzik for keeping that offensive right. possession alive. That's right. I know maybe he came in. People thought he was going to burn the nets up with his three-point shooting and everything of that nature. But I think he's more comfortable now of filling the role of being truly the role player out there doing the good defensive stop, getting defensive stops, hitting the boards, distributing the ball. I think he, you're seeing a lot of positives out of him. Time out on the floor. The Redbird lead is 13, 54, 41. Back with more from Wright State in a moment. In 1953, the Luca Grill introduced pizza to Central Illinois. As the story goes, John Baldini was visiting his future wife, Virginia, in St. Louis. They stopped into a restaurant in a small neighborhood called The Hill. The couple fell in love with the cracker-thin crust of the pizza. And each other. John always, the smooth-talking statesman, managed to get a copy of the recipe. John's father reluctantly let the boys try their new idea in the restaurant. John's brother Todd dismissed pizza as a fad that would soon fade away. Todd was wrong. Should be mentioned, Todd was a Cubs fan. Why come to Peterson's in Fairbury? For great deals like these. For great selection, Chevrolet, Buick, Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep, all in one location. Great financing, financing available through over 30 lenders, and great service, certified technicians, body shop, towing, and free loaners. That's right. At Peterson Motors, we have a family tradition of taking care of our customers. Check out our inventory online or come visit us today. For a great experience, visit Peterson Motors, your dealer who cares. Schooners is what comes to mind when you say neighborhood bar and grill. Independently owned and operated, Schooners opened its doors in 1983. Schooners has been a neighborhood tradition, serving delicious foods like beer battered chicken, buffalo wings, the Schooner Burger, fresh garden salads and homemade soups, the famous King Tenderloin, and try our new mini tenderloin platter. Schooners offers blue plate specials every weekday from 11 to 2 featuring homemade items. Come on in and let me get something fresh for you today. Taste the local flavor at Schooners, 829-6841. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. The Redbird lead is 13. Champa Gucci's going to miss the three, but again, Siad Odzik, five with an offensive rebound, gives Illinois State another crack at a three from the other side of the floor. Well, it, it's not just the fact that he got a, re as a rebound in between two opponents. I mean, he went up and he had to muscle that thing out of the air and then make the outlet pass that set up that set up the three-pointer. Great job, great individual effort. Odzik with four rebounds in the game. His career high is five, so he's knocking on the door. And what a critical statistic that is tonight. And Aguchi looks like he's going to be whistled for a hold. If so, that would be his second foul. And that is indeed the case. And we've got another timeout on the floor. 54-41, Illinois State, State leads Wright State. Back with more from the Nutter Center on Comcast. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington, or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. At Broman Healthcare, we reach more hearts. From Bloomington to Eureka, 
and Leroy to Pontiac. We touch more lives with state-of-the-art facilities and expert specialized care. We help you and your loved ones more than we can say. The heart knows no boundaries, neither do we. Illinois State leads Wright State, 10.39 to go here in regulation. We are live with you in Dayton, Ohio, with another center on the campus of Wright State University, a beautiful facility here, and just a second meeting between these two schools. This is the return game for Illinois State off of last year's bracket buster game in which the Redbirds won at Redbird Arena, 54 to 46. We've already reached our 54. Oh, oh they're going to call Osiris Eldridge on that. Oh, my Lord. You know, oh, holy smokes. In the scope of the big picture, that hurts because now it puts the Wright State Raiders into the bonus. Wow. They're shooting one and one with 10.38 left in the game. That, that man, Coach Jankovic, is not a happy camper with that call. So Corey Cooper Wood, the junior college transfer to the foul line. Six foot seven, 215 long and lean. Here's another look at that, that foul. Well, as you can see there, as he's coming down, Osiris did not undercut him in any way, shape, or form. He got his feet tangled with Osiris, but Osiris had nothing to do with it. And pictures don't lie. That cost Osiris a foul, put another Redbird with a foul up, and put them in the bonus. And Cooper Wood makes good on the free throws. And it looks like Wright State is back to his own. Yeah, they are. There's no question they're back into that. They want to extend the wing pressure and try to get help on all, all penetrations. It slows the game down, which is what they want to have happen. Holloway, spot up, three from the corner. Missed it. Offensive rebound, Osiris Eldridge. <laughs> he came flying in from the weak side wing off of that offensive set, and there was no way. They were just not athletic enough to keep him off the boards. Eldridge, who averaged 15.8 points per game last season, is right at 15 here tonight. As we have 10 minutes to go in this one. And he's had to work for him. They're not being easy. He's put, he's put in his labor. Cooper Land knocks down the three. So he answers from the outside. It's a 10-point game now at 56-46. Right State for two possessions now stays in the zone again. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. They extend the wings to get a little pressure out there, and they've got help when they do. Aguchi's pass is picked off. That's the fourth steal for the Raider defense. Duggins all the way down, missed the shot, tipped around, Aguchi comes away with it. Holloway would be wise to pull up, which he does. He didn't have the numbers. Now let's see what they do defensively. It appears they've gone back to their man-to-man. -man. After the timeout, that's what they did earlier. They went two possessions of a zone and then back to their man. Holloway lost the dribble. He had to call timeout. He was in all kinds of trouble, and he, he almost turned the basketball over, but alertly called timeout. Well, he was buried on that baseline. There's no question about that. And he was losing his balance and was going to go out of bounds. Let's see if we got another look at it here. Well, here we see it on the monitor as he comes up. He makes a hard drive. He gets cut off, and as he's losing his balance, okay, he called timeout. He knew he was in trouble. Good smart move by by a senior. Good smart move. Basketball season is upon us. Season opener for Illinois State and Wright State. We're glad that you're alongside here for our Comcast viewers in the land of Lincoln. And in the Buckeye State here, we welcome the fans in the Dayton area that are watching us on the Ohio News Network. Entertaining basketball game here. Illinois State 56, Wright State 46. Kurt Pegler and Bob Morris with you for this tip-off to the season. The Missouri Valley Conference against the Horizon League. Both. And don't forget that the home opener for Illinois State University is on the 28th 
that's technically the 27th. It's Friday the 27th. We've got the right day of the week, but the wrong date there. The 27th against Nichols State. That's part of the uh, World Vision Basketball Invitational that the Redbirds are hosting. The first Redbird hosted tournament in forever. It's been a long time since there's been a tournament on the campus of Illinois State University. No kidding. Here's Eldridge, his three. Front of the rim, no good, missed. Odiacosa had it. And he was fouled. Yeah, he was. For a minute there, they were looking at him. I thought he might be guilty of the foul. Yeah, I think he was holding his breath, too. But after the timeout, which I think we're going to see a lot of this as the game progresses, Wright State came back on the floor in their 1-2-2 zone. They got out of the man after the timeout, came back into the zone, probably just for a one to two possession look, but it, they believe it's slowing the Redbirds' tack, attack down and cutting back on the athleticism and making the Redbirds shoot free throws. And Which, Odia Costa did not convert on that one and one. And it, not only did he not convert, it didn't look good either. We have... I think now for the first time, at least in the second half, we've got Odia Cosa and Sampe on the floor at the same time for the Redbirds. Here's Duggan. Now Tabler, his three is missed. Sampe, one-armed rebound there. If Tabler's going to shoot shots like that with, with Osiris flying at him uh, on the move, I like our chances. Odia Cosa wanted it. Now he's got him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Back down over Land, drew the foul on Cooper Land. Land didn't like it. Well, this is half the job. He did half the job. He got isolated. He got. The, he drew the foul. Now he's got to go finish the job and convert some free throws. Well, he was a 49% free thrower last year, and that's a part of the game that he's been trying to work on really all offseason. Well, we see here as he set him up wonderfully. And, yeah, there was definite contact that made the ball come out. No question about that, even though... They don't think so here. Now we're seeing Ronnie Thomas come back in the game for Wright State, and we're going to see Will Graham also return and send Cooper Land and Troy Tabler to the Wright State bench. Well, to say that Dima Odiacosa spent time in the offseason during the summer shooting free throws would be an understatement. He lived in Redbird Arena shooting that ball. And we see it pay off right there with two throws. Well, Odia Cosa was in foul trouble in last year's game against Wright State. He played just 18 minutes in the game and was held to seven points. Tonight, he's got eight points, still fighting the foul trouble, but he's been big for the birds. Here's Duggan. Down the lane, flipped it up and in. Holloway got shoved out of the way on that one. Still a 10-point ball game, 7.45 left. They have not, they being the Raiders, have not been able to cut into that lead for any period of time. Tim Jankovic wants a timeout. I think it's a injury timeout as much as anything, which is exactly what it is. Nobody left, the officials called the timeout. What? Well, okay, now we've no. got an official's time out of the floor, so we'll step aside. 7.39 to go here at the Nutter Center, where Illinois State leads Wright State, 58-48. These are unique money times. Low fixed rates, taxes, risk, all make people uneasy. Traditional methods of saving and investing haven't worked as well recently. What should you do with your 401ks and your IRAs? There are investment alternatives that guarantee principal, give you the upside potential of the market, and shelter everything from current taxes. If safety and growth are important to you, call us to find out about these alternatives. For 29 years at the Cagle Financial Center, we've been providing safe and sound financial guidance. Let's talk and make sure your money's safe. Wait, turn that trash into cash. Recycling aluminum cans is good for the environment and a great way to earn some extra money. The Morris Tick Recycling Center is Central Illinois' place to recycle aluminum cans as well as other metals, including iron, brass, copper, aluminum, and stainless. Whether you want to make money for your organization, church, or school, or need some extra cash to feed the gas pump, recycling is the way to go green. Wednesdays, seniors 55 and older receive 5 cents over the base price for aluminum cans. The Morris Tick Company, recycling since 1898. Call 309-828-6084 for more information. Contrary to most people's belief, uh, our economy does pretty well even when their national economy is in a recession. People should come to the EDC's annual meeting so they can understand what the Economic Development Council is doing to improve the community. And they should also come because they're going to be inspired by a speech by one of the leading business writers in the country. I think we're very fortunate to have Mr. Carlgaard, and I think he's going to provide us great insight into what we have to look forward to in 2009 and beyond as we build our future. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. 
10-point Illinois State lead over Rice State. Here's that last sequence, Bob, that you mentioned with the Emmanuel Holloway going flying out. Duggins took advantage of it and scored with the right hand. He's the first Wright State player in double figures. He now has 10. Bodies flying all over the place there. Yeah, that he is. There's no question about that. He's a quality player. That's why he was first team all pick in their preseason for the Horizon Conference. He's a quality player. Was last year. He is this year. And he's only going to get better. Man to man out of the timeout by Wright State. They're doing a nice job of mixing defenses up on the Redbirds. Here's Ozzie with 10 on the clock. Eldridge to the baseline. Floater off the side of the backboard. Can't get it. But he gets it back. Now it's Phillips left open for a three. Big triple by Lloyd Phillips. By getting his own raw offensive rebound, Osiris Eldridge kept the ball alive, put it in the hands of Lloyd Phillips, and he cashed in. Boom. Trey. Extends the lead. 48-61 Redbirds. Significant basket that time. Under seven minutes to go now. Here's Land. Redbird's trying to harass him. Thomas down the lane, lost the dribble, turn around, short jumper, rims in. Oof. Got a gracious roll that time off the, off the rim, but knocked it down. Four points for Ronnie Thomas. 61-50. The Redbird lead is 11. Defense switches again. Now they're going back to zone. Redbirds recognize it all the time. They're doing a good job. Phillips is going to try again. Missed it. Tipped out oh. by Odia Costa. Oh. And Ozick somehow saved it without an over and a back. Unbelievable effort by everybody. What a sequence. And the Redbirds get a fresh shot clock. And now an offensive foul is going to be whistled against Sam Pay, it looked like. And I believe that'll be Brandon's fourth. Crucial call with 6-10 left in the game. Going to have to set him, I believe, because you can't have both of them on the floor, both being Odia Costa and Sam Pay with one of them in foul trouble. Ah, you know what? Coach is going to leave him out there. I kind of like that. I really do. It's first game of the year. you got to learn to play intelligently. They're going right at him. Short shot that time was missed by Thomas. Now Sante short jumper. Oh. Here you've seen probably a little bit of the fatigue of not not being in full game shape, only being about 70, 75% at best. Brown down the lane, flips it up, oh. and he drew the, no, yeah, he did draw the foul, and it's gonna be no. on. They called a block on Sampe. Yep, that's the deal, so and Brandon Sampe is done. Oh, my, my, my. That's hard for me to understand. I'd love to see that replay if we happen to have the opportunity. And the truck says, here it comes, let's take a look. Let's see where the action happens. Here he comes. Is he set? Oh, my goodness. I, I... Okay, folks, I'll let you take make the call. But at 6, or excuse me, 551 remaining in the ballgame, Brandon Sampe goes to the bench and won't return because of five fouls. Too bad. Well, again, I think the Redbirds have to be tickled to death that a guy that had hip surgery in August played in the season opener when he wasn't due to be back until oh. December. I'll tell you what, Kurt, two weeks ago, I was at practice, and if you'd have told me then that he was even going to dress tonight, let alone contribute this many minutes, I would have said, there is no, there's no way you're goofy. And they've got, not just did they get minutes out of him, they got quality minutes out of him. You might still be goofy, but they got good play out of him. <laughs> <laughs> With the foul shots. Well, Sam Pay, we said, was going to have to play somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 minutes, and that's going to be about what he played. Now the birds are going to have to be intelligent with a lot of their aspects of the game. They can't can't take chances, and, and they have to be able to get people on the board. Tabler missed the three. That time Eldridge came back. He, he bit on the first pump fake and then stayed with it. So the fans here, of course, wanted some contact and a follow against Tabler. Well, this is the key point of the game. We're at the five-minute mark here, Bob. A 10-point Redbird lead. You mentioned the Redbirds have to be patient offensively. Every decision from here on out is going to be extremely critical. Well, they have to be patient because I think it's obvious the birds are more athletic, and if they are patient, they're going to get good looks at the basket, and they should be able to score. 
Another whistle that time down low. It's going to go against Cooper Land, who's bodying up against Odiacosa. Only his third, I believe. Yeah, only the third on Cooper Land. But it's not, uh, another thing that becomes obvious is if, if we are patient, we can get the ball at the low block. And if that's true, they, they have to foul Odiacosa to stop him. And, and if they foul him, like I said earlier, that's half the battle. Now he's got to go knock down free throws. Nope. And the Redbirds are in the double bonus here, so two free throws from here on out. Odia Costa, three out of six at this juncture from the free throw line tonight. And if he's going to show improvement from his free throw shooting from a year ago, this is where he's got to do it. He's going to get opportunities down the stretch. Corey Cooperwood in. Troy Tabler out for Wright State. Odia Cosa splits the foul shots. You can tell when that left his hand, it was good. Just smooth. It's there. You can tell he's worked on it. Now he just needs more repetitions in game situations. And he'll get that. We will get him the ball. Whistle again away from the basketball. And that's going right. to go against Wright State. You know what? They Corey Cooper would. They blew the whistle, and Champ Odiacosa started shaking his head and clapping immediately. He knew he had position, and that Corey Cooperwood had fouled him to take it away. So good job on the, on the defensive sequence that time. Big, I think this is a big uh, possession right here. We kind of got him down, feeling lowly. Odiacosa off the lob from Phillips, but he couldn't finish. No, he couldn't. I think he got a little bit underneath the basket and couldn't get the angle to finish. But a steal. Phillips comes right back and takes it out of the hands of Will Graham. That was amazing. I don't know where he came from, let alone go up there and get the steal. Phillips picked a great time to get the first Redbird steal of the second half. They had eight in the first half, but that's the first steal here in the second half. Under four minutes to play. Now it's a Gucci. Nope. Not as good a shooting percentage for either team in the second half. And I think, again, that's first game you see those kind of things happen. Duggins with a left hand. He's Great. a good player. Great job that time. Not, that time, you, that's when you classify a kid like that as not a shooter necessarily, but a scorer. He can beat you in a lot of different ways, and, and there he showed it. 12 points now for Vaughn Duggins and the Nutter Center fans on their feet trying to encourage the Raiders to play some D. Here's Aguchi down the right side. Ball out of bounds. Illinois State maintains possession. 319 left in the ball game. You got to see the Redbirds show the ability to finish it out and put their stamp on this one and not let Wright State make a run at them and get back in it. Time out on the floor. Don't go anyplace, folks. We're setting up for a fantastic finish. 319 to play. Redbirds 62, Wright State 53. At Broman Healthcare, we reach more hearts. From Bloomington to Eureka and Leroy to Pontiac, we touch more lives with state-of-the-art facilities and expert specialized care. We help you and your loved ones more than we can say. The heart knows no boundaries, neither do we. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington, or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. They're coming from 30 to 50 miles away for good reason. Red Barker Honda is having November, the biggest garage sale. We have the nicest used cars, SUVs, and vans in central Illinois. Get huge savings on certified used V6 Accords, Pilots, Odyssey's Ridge Lines with special rates of 2.9%. Every vehicle has a Carfax report and service inspection. Many makes and models look at BradBarkerHonda.com for descriptions and photos. November's biggest garage sale at Brad Barker Honda. If you want savings and bargains, get here now for fun savings and cars. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Broman Healthcare. 
Back here at the Nutter Center in Dayton, Ohio, here's that last sequence with Lloyd Phillips coming up with a critical steal for the Redbirds. Well, he's off, a, and he comes in, and it, it's basically just a lazy pass right there. You know, no question, I think that Graham, Graham didn't need to make that type of pass, but it was, you know, lazy, and, and Lloyd Phillips is an athlete. He got up and got it. Big switch and change of possession. That helped the birds. And so now the Redbirds have it. There's 16 seconds on the shot clock left here in this offensive sequence. Back to the zone. I kind of figured it would be out of the out-of-bounds. Correct. Timeout, and they go. They switch defenses every time. And there's going to be a whistle against the Redbirds. And that's, I believe, against Champ Odiacosa. No, yeah, against uh, Dima. Uh, Dima yep. Odiacosa, yep. excuse me. That'd be his, what, fourth? fourth? Yep. And so now both teams are going to be in the double bonus from here on out as Wright State has reached that part of its game. Three minutes to go. Here's Cooper Land penetrating, missed the shot, got his own rebound down low. He's going over Odiacosa and he scores. Yeah, Odiacosa had to play it smart. He couldn't go up and challenge him. He kept his ground. And, you know, that's the maturity of a player right there. He, he held his ground and didn't go up and give the referee a chance to foul him out of the game. Birds need to answer for something positive on this end here. Eldridge reach in foul. No, he traveled. He lost the handle. As he started to pick it up and make the pass, he lost the handle. Shuffled his feet in the process. Turnover. Now, again, we got the birds got to get down and, and make something happen defensively because they've struggled the last two times. They've had two turnovers in a row offensively. If you're going to hang your head on defense, this is where you got to do it. And Brad Brownell is substituting offense for defense. Back in the game comes Tabler's three-point shooter, and Cooperwood goes to the bench. <laughs> Under two and a half to go here. Entertaining season opener. Duggins, three. Missed it. Oguchi with his 12th rebound. What a night. What a night for Oguchi. 12 rebounds. That's awesome. And his opening night as a Redbird. See Redbirds taking her time, setting things up. They're probably going to be patient till about 10 on the clock. And an offensive foul against Illinois State. That'll be the third on Aguchi, but I believe it's double bonus. Nope. But it was charge, charge, charge is not going to be a shooting foul. My fault. Oh my! I don't think you could really say that young man was set. Cooper Land Woo. has drawn, I think, three fouls, three charging fouls here tonight. Well, for Wright State, let's say two and a gift. Any way you want to call it, it goes Wright State's way. The Redbirds have to buckle down with a minute 45 left in the ball game and get a defensive stop. Land three from the wing, missed. Offensive rebound by Wright State's Cooperwood, and he drew the fifth foul on Odiacosa. Now it's gut check time for the Redbirds. We're going to have to go with some inexperience inside. No question about it. The next, the minute and a half left in the game. As we see the replay, Corey Cooperwood does a good job of fighting for his team to get a rebound. His first fake gets us up in the air, and Dima gets called for his fifth. That's the two post players inside that are going to go sit down and not be a factor in the last minute and a half. Okay, the birds have decided, the coaching staff for the Redbirds have decided that we're going to put the mini birds on the court the rest of this game. Siad Adzik has checked in to replace Odiacosa. Cooper Wood at the free throw line. Nothing but net. So the five on the floor right now for Illinois State. Lloyd Phillips, Siad Adzik, Osiris Eldridge, Emmanuel Holloway, and Champa Gucci. Wright State is countering with Troy Tabler, Todd Brown, Corey Cooperwood, who is at the free throw line, Will Graham, and Vaughn Duggins. Both foul shots good for Cooperwood. Give him six points in his first Wright State appearance. Now we're seeing some full court pressure by Wright State. I don't think that ought to fluster the Redbirds at all. And it doesn't. 
end up with it in the hands of Lloyd Phillips, and he brings it across and calls timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. So we've got a minute 26 to go here, Bob, and the Redbirds' lead has been trimmed to five now at 62-57. That seems to be an ongoing theme tonight. Redbirds get it to 10. Wright State trims it to five. Redbirds take it back up. They bring it back down, and, and nothing has changed all the way down. Wright State won't go away. There's no question about it. That team has got a lot of fight in them. That's why they win 20-plus every year over here. And we remind you that our next televised game here on Comcast will be when the Redbirds are home against Bowling Green. December the 6th, that's a 7.05 tip time at Redbird Arena, and you'll see it over most of these same stations on Comcast. Just a quick reminder from last year's Redbird season, any time that they held the opponent to 60, less than 60 points, they were 18 and one throughout the year. The Raiders from Wright State now have 57. So with a minute 26 left, let's see if the birds have the ability to hold them under 60, which is, you know, that's only three points away. So that's a tough task. But every time they completed that tough task last year, it, it seemed to be their way with 18 wins out of it. Well, the sledding has been much more difficult for the Redbirds here in the second half. They had 41 points at halftime, and they've scored just 21 here in the second half. Well, the, the shooting percentages for both squads have gone down. Redbirds are going to definitely be deliberate, but they need to finish with some points this time. Odzik gives it up to Holloway. Ten on the shot clock. Now it's Eldridge. He's being hounded by Duggan. It doesn't surprise anybody that as the shot goes down, it's in his hands, but he turns it over. Now on the other end, it's Will Graham laying it in. It's a three-point basketball game, under a minute to play. Phillips, rise, floater is in. Awesome, that makes it a two-possession game. What a cool head to dribble, penetrate, and finish with the lay-in. Duggins down low, flipped up the shot, can't get it. Ball is still free, and the Redbirds come away with it. It's a Gucci, and he's fouled in the backcourt. And it's double bonus time. How about Lloyd Phillips playing Woo! in his first game as an Illinois State Redbird? As he came across the middle of that lane, it was like he was floating in slow motion. He just all of a sudden gained control and think, rolled that thing up there like a point guard should. I love it. Great finish. And then to come down on the other end and secure the rebound off of a defensive stop, that's what the birds needed. And now Champaguchi with big foul shots here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just kind of made it look exciting. It went in. This is the big one because this could put it to a three possession game rather than a two. Six points is only two three pointers away. Seven makes a three possession. With 30 seconds left, that's hard to do. And Wright State's got a bunch of guys that can shoot the three. That they do. Yeah, baby. Huge stop right on that last possession. Now the birds have to just maintain themselves and not foul. Duggins down the lane, flipped it up, can't get it. Cooper Land offensive rebound, sticks it back in. Timeout Wright State. Birds trying to play passive and not foul anybody. And in the process, they give up the rebound. And it's it's okay because now Wright State has no choice but to, as the birds get the ball inbound, they have to try to steal and in the process foul if they don't get the steal. And the birds are gonna, it's gonna be a parade to the free throw line for the remaining 22 seconds. Here's that last sequence again. Bob, you mentioned that the Redbirds just kind of have to stay away from the, the foul. Now Duggan's going to miss, but Land's going to stick with it and stick it in. And you don't want to go up and challenge him in that scenario. If you can't get the rebound, don't go over anybody's back or don't foul anybody from the other team that gets it and goes up with it because you're not only giving them the basket, you're stopping the clock and you're giving them a free throw. And don't forget, Redbird fans, that your source for all the Illinois State University news online is GoRedbirds.com. That's the official website of the athletic department at Illinois State University. GoRedbirds.com. All of your stats, all of your info for every sport at Illinois State University. Here we're at Dayton, Ohio, the Wright State Raiders hosting Illinois State in the return game from last year's Bracket Buster game won by the Birds in February. 22 seconds to go. It's a 66-61 Illinois State advantage. Eldridge gets the ball inbound 
Suaguchi, he's fouled in the backcourt. He had no intentions of giving that ball up. He was, he was going to hold on to that. He just knocked down his last two free throws, and he's, he's, he's confident that he can go do it again. Real quick, Kurt, after the coach's timeout last time, Wright take, takes the timeout. The Redbirds break the huddle. They're walking back out on the floor. Emmanuel Holloway is grabbing players by the jersey, talking to them, pumping them up, re reminding them of their assignments and what's got to take place for a rip. I love seeing that in a senior. He's out there doing his job. He's the coach on the court. Aguchi was a 79% free throw shooter for the three years that he spent playing in the Pac-10 at Oregon, and he's looked cool as a cucumber here at the foul line in the last couple of seconds. That's outstanding. 79% for three years in the Pac-10 is pretty darn good. I just hope he's 100% for the remaining 20 seconds in, there, is this, in this ball game. Well, that went down the drain. You're going to see some threes jacked up. There's Tabler. He's a three-point threat, but he missed it that time. Taking a three throughout the course of a game in your offense is one thing, but when you have to make it without any air is another thing. Cooper Wood's going to return in for Wright State. He'll replace Tabler, so now it's defense coming in and setting the uh, offensive three-point man back to the bench. And again, it's going to be Eldridge to trigger from under the basket. It's going to be Holloway. He's fouled in the backcourt that time by Todd Brown. For the game, the Redbirds are 13 of 19 from the free throw line, which is right out of 68, just under 70%. And that, you know, for the game opener, the season opener in the first game of the year, that's not bad. If we finish off here and make the free throws that we're supposed to be, we're going to be right at 70% for the night. And I think that's an acceptable pace to get you off and started for the season. You gain confidence from it and move from there. Well, the Redbirds entered this game, as we mentioned, shorthanded. Alex Rubin is on crutches. Bobby Hill is not due after his knee surgery, not due back till maybe around Christmas time. Dima Odiacosa and Brandon Sampei foul out, and yet the Redbirds on the road in a very difficult arena are going to start this season with a, with a victory at Wright State. Well, they do it with five guys getting in double figures tonight. That's huge. How about Aguchi? He may as well get the last rebound of the game. He, it is right that he does. What a night for that young man. A double-double for Champ Aguchi in his first game as a Redbird. 14 points, 13 rebounds, and the Redbirds emerge victorious here at the Nutter Center. 69-61 over Wright State. And we're going to hear from head coach Tim Jankovic here momentarily. He'll make his way over to our broadcast position. The Redbirds victorious on the road. We knew this was going to be a difficult game for Illinois State based on the fact that Wright State's a very good team, but again, based on also the fact that the birds have been beset with so many injuries that uh, we knew they'd be a little short-handed. And they emerge victorious 69-61. And head coach Tim Jankovic is coming over to join us. Put those headsets on their partner. So you bring in a team that has Bobby Hill and... Alex Rubin, not available. You bring in a guy like Brandon Sampay, who's playing uh, on a bad hip, we thought, but he was playing very well. Kellen Thornton, who tweaked an ankle. You have two guys fall out, and you win on the road in the opener. Not bad. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I couldn't be, I could not possibly be more proud. Uh, you know, first game on the road, we, did, we weren't perfect at all, and, and uh, probably no one in America is perfect right now, but uh, these guys got some heart, and, um, and I'm so proud. I'm so happy for them. It's going to make that trip home a heck of a lot shorter. I can tell you that for sure. Coach, do, do me a favor and address the defensive effort and your thoughts on that here this evening. Well, I thought the effort was really good. I, I thought it was really, really good. I didn't think we played well, though. I, I, I mean, you look at the stats, and first half we're giving up 50 percent from the field that's that's not going to cut it ever on the road it's uh it's uh we're very fortunate i'll tell you that we, we've got to get better uh but in their defense uh we're playing some guys an awful lot of minutes in this game and uh you know it's hard to sustain this, the intensity that we like to play with for that long particularly early in the year when you're not really in game shape you know you haven't played enough of those games but uh just the just the togetherness uh the fight and the pride, you know, and the pride in the team. That's that's what I'm thrilled about. I know I know you hang your head on defense with your squads, and it's evident in the effort that they always put forth. But you had five guys in double figures offensively tonight. That has to be something that spreading the wealth around like that on a first game out wow. is rather impressive. That. 
So you guys keep track of all that stuff. We don't we don't know much going on the bench. We don't we don't know very much to be honest. We do know who's in foul trouble, I'll tell you that. And there were a lot of fouls tonight. Uh, early in the year, you know, the officials are mandated to call all kinds of things and they do a good job of that. But later in the year, as we all know, it gets much more physical and a lot of this stuff uh, is, is just let go. But but uh, five guys in double figures can't have a better team than that. I hope that's every single night. It's what we preach. Uh, open guy gets the ball on time on target. We talk about it all the time and making the extra pass. And obviously we were doing some of that tonight. And on top of that, uh, if you were handing out game balls, you got guys like Siad Adzik coming up with big rebounds. And uh, you had guys really stepping in, but Campaguchi in his first game as a Redbird with double double, 14 points and 13 rebounds. That's a pretty he had good. 13 rebounds. That's a pretty yeah. good See, Redbird. I told you we didn't know what's going on over there. <laughs> that that is outstanding. Uh, good for him. I mean, uh, to to have to have not played in so long, you know, it's just not that easy to get in the game flow. He's been out a whole year, and obviously he's pretty well back in the game flow. And uh, we're very happy to have him. Very proud to have him. Congratulations on a big win to start the season 69-61. Thank you very much. Tim Jankovic, head coach of the Redbirds. They win by eight, back and four from Wright State in just a minute. Since 1967, Quality Truck Equipment is Bloomington Normal's only truck equipment upfitter. Quality Truck handles the highest quality truck bodies available, from dump trucks to service vehicles and everything in between. Let Quality Truck Equipment's professionals design and install a truck body tailored to your needs. Not only will we save you money up front, our higher quality bodies will far outlast cookie cutter bodies found on car lots. Quality Truck Equipment, conveniently located at 1201 Bell Street in Bloomington. Whether you're hosting a party or sitting down to enjoy the game, don't forget the beer nuts. Peanuts, cashews, or almonds are available in different tastes, sure to please everyone. We offer a large selection of unique gift packs and specialty items for every occasion and price range. Shop in person, by phone, by fax, or by mail. You can even shop on our website at beernuts.com. Shop in either of our two locations, the corner of Washington and Robinson Streets in Bloomington, or at the Sale Barn on Route 51 South. Contrary to most people's belief, uh, our economy does pretty well even when their national economy is in a recession. People should come to the EDC's annual meeting so they can understand what the Economic Development Council is doing to improve the community. And they should also come because they're going to be inspired by a speech by one of the leading business writers in the country. I think we're very fortunate to have Mr. Carl Gard, and I think he's going to provide us great insight into what we have to look forward to in 2009 and beyond as we build our future. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Schooners. 69-61, Illinois State over Wright State in the season opener here in Dayton at the Nutter Center where the Redbirds are victorious in their first game. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris back with you and our key asset of the game, we mentioned him. He's Champ Aguchi. Chamberlain Amika Aguchi makes his Redbird debut and he makes it a memorable one. 14 points and 13 rebounds. He did everything tonight, didn't he? That he did. I tell you, everybody was uh, anxious to watch him uh, show us his shooting abilities and things of that nature, as we're going to see here on the on this replay. But the rebounds, holy shamoly, who would have believed he was going to come out in his first game and get 13 boards and lead us in that category? Great individual effort. Good start as a Redbird. The most valuable asset of the game, brought to you by Dennis Cagle Financial Services, Champ Aguchi in his Redbird debut. Illinois State again a 69-61 winner. Back to wrap things up from Wright State University in just a minute. Can you believe this? I'm the only photo he has of his great-grandfather, and he stores me like this. Heat, cold, humidity, mold, mildew, and bugs. Do you know what they do to a valued family heirloom like me? Uncle Bill's Climate Controlled Storage provides the perfect environment for your valuables. Their temperature-controlled rooms keep the humidity down and help prevent mold, rust, and paper rot. Uncle Bill's Climate Controlled Storage. 451-4500.
products don't know how to find customers, but Comcast Spotlight does, with a mix of on-air, online, and on-demand advertising. You can reach your customers wherever they are. Today's ISU basketball action is brought to you by Schooners. 69-61, Illinois State a winner over Wright State in the season opener, a big team effort. Lloyd Phillips with a couple of big plays, Seattle Odzik with a couple of big pay plays. Of course, Osiris Eldridge is going to always show up. He had 15 points tonight. They do it with two guys falling out and two guys uh, essentially on crutches on the bench. Impressive. <laughs> oh, impressive in so many ways. And I know as we talked to Coach Jankovic afterwards, he's talking about things they've got to clean up and things they've got to polish up as a coach should be talking. That, But let me tell you, that was a great first game of the season effort team effort and on both ends of the court five people in double figures you couldn't ask for more people t getting steals people finishing off steals I think what a building block this is for the upcoming season for the Redbirds and folks let me tell you this is a very good right state basketball team this wasn't uh, weenie water state that we played tonight this was a quality team and the Redbirds stuck it to them on their home floor great team effort 69-61, your final score again, Illinois State over Wright State. For Bob Morris, for our producer, director, Frank Blaine, and the rest of our staff here that helped us get this broadcast on the air in Dayton, my name is Kurt Pegler. Thanks for being with us, and good night from Dayton, Ohio, where the Redbirds are 69-61 winners.